It's time for the million dollar question. What variety of tree to plant? Hang with me a few minutes. I'll try and help you answer that question. The variety of tree you choose to plant on your property is a big decision. Several years ago, I spoke with a man in his 70s and he had bought cultivars from a local nursery and planted them on his property. But he said he never really got a good crop of nuts off of his trees. He said that they would grow them, but most years they were so covered up in scab that they weren't even worth messing with. When I was a younger man, I planted a seed in my yard that I had gotten from a buddy's tree that was growing in his yard. I assumed that because his tree produced good nut, that if I grew a tree from one of his seeds, that mine would be good also. But the reality is a pecan tree doesn't work that way. And had my tree actually survived, I probably never would have seen a good nut crop on it because I didn't have any other trees nearby to help pollinate it. Stories like these and other pecan tree fails, they're playing out every day. And it's kind of sad, really, because with a little bit of understanding and a little planning, they can easily be avoided. Now, I know you're probably saying, all right, man, enough of the stories. Just tell me which variety to plant on my property. And I would if I could, but there is no blanket answer to which is the right variety. You need a basic understanding of pecan trees, and you need to decide what you want from them and what you're willing to put into them. What I mean by that is, is this thing gonna be a major source of income for me? Or is it just a hobby orchard? Or perhaps just ornamentals in the yard? Are you gonna invest in equipment so you can spray them and maintain them like a professional orchard? Or perhaps can you borrow some from your neighbor? You need to be clear on these things before you start picking your variety. A seedling is a tree that has grown up straight from the nut. Any nut that is left alone and allowed to grow to maturity without any grafting done to it, it's gonna be unique to itself. It's not necessarily gonna resemble the characteristics that the parent tree had. They're a lot like children. It may resemble the parents a little bit, but they're gonna be unique to themselves. There's just no way to know what you really have until they've matured and you've had time to observe them. Now, I'm not saying that a seedling tree is a bad tree, but they are unpredictable. You really just don't know what you're gonna get from them. Let's imagine for a minute you plant a small orchard with only seedling trees. 10 to 20 years from now, you're probably gonna be frustrated with your orchard because all the trees in it will be unique in their characteristics. You're gonna run into a lot of management issues. You're gonna struggle with things like varying nut size and quality, poor pollination, sporadic harvest dates, disease control. That's just to name a few. So what has happened over the years is that farmers and growers have looked for ways to deal with these issues they begin to take trees that exemplified the characteristics that they desired and use the process known as grafting to make exact copies of those trees so that future orchards could be full of trees with similar characteristics and therefore be way more manageable. That's where we get our cultivars from. They are the varieties with these desired characteristics that have been propagated through grafting. So in theory, if you have an orchard full of the perfect cultivar, life's gonna be easy. Ding, ding. Mm. All the nuts fall at the same time. They're of the same size and quality. And if you do come across any disease or pest issues, your trees are gonna be real easy to treat. You can be efficient in your treatments because they're all the same. Pecan trees are monoecious. One tree is gonna have both the male and female flowers on it. Now that sounds great at first, like, okay, well this thing's gonna pollinate itself, but it's not true and they always do better when there's another tree around to help them in the pollination process. Pecan trees exhibit what's known as dichogamy. And what that means is that the stigma on the female flower is not receptive at the same time that the catkin on the male flower is producing the pollen. Although male and female flowers are on the same tree, they don't do their thing at the same time. And to make things a little more confusing, pecan trees come in a type one and type two varieties. And in those varieties, the pollinating and the receptivity are reversed. Type one trees are gonna produce pollen and then have that receptive female flower. A type two tree is gonna have the receptive female flower and then produce that pollen. When you're selecting your trees, and you'll want at least two, make sure you pick trees that complement each other in the windy process. This wind reminds me of pollen floating over to that receptive stigma on the female flower and a baby is born they complement each other in the pollination process. Oftentimes you're gonna end up with a type one and a type two, but maybe not always. Make sure you study the charts down below and make sure that they're compatible with each other. On my orchard up in Southeast Georgia, I live 170 miles away from that place. Sometimes I go three or four weeks without ever visiting. I needed low input varieties. 
I'm not going to be there to be able to monitor my trees for disease and for scab, and I'm certainly not going to have time to get on a scab spraying routine. And the other major factor in selecting my varieties was that we're putting in our orchard so we can test bag of nuts that we make. We chose cultivars to give us a varying range size of nuts that are going to be coming out of our orchard. We want to be sure that our machines were working with different size nuts. Guys, there are a lot of ways to mess up, but don't let it discourage you. If you've watched this video for this long, it shows you're thinking about these things, so you're already way ahead of the game. Or you just think I'm really good looking and you're liking the smile. Don't use that, that's copyrighted. We're gonna put some good links to articles about backyard orcharding. Uh, we'll put some pollinization compatibility charts down there, and maybe some articles that we found helpful when we were doing our orchard. It's really a fun read. I mean, don't do it in the morning, you'll fall asleep. Don't do it at night, you'll probably fall asleep. Do it standing in the middle of the day after four or five cups of coffee. Take time, talk to your nursery, tell them about your situation before you buy your trees. Check out your state's university's websites. They often have a lot of good information on trees if you can grow them well in your state. And you may want to get in touch with your agricultural extension office. If your county doesn't have one, I bet there's one in your region that can help you. They're usually easy to find if you just take time and Google them. And often they're very friendly folks and willing to go that extra mile with you. And their services are free. Guys, remember to ask yourself before you buy your trees, what do you want out of them? And what are you willing to put into them? Pick varieties that match up with your answers and that fit your location and you're well on your way to enjoying your pecan tree experience. Keep watching us, fellas. We're gonna do some cool stuff. Check out our other videos for more helpful tips and info. I'm Silas Dudley. Thanks for checking out the Nut Dynasty.